Dear students, dear participants of the Catholic Earthcare Youth Summit 2021, thank you for gathering in this online space today to explore how you can see, judge, and act together on ecological justice issues. And thank you for inviting me to share some thoughts with you during your liturgy. You have heard from the sisters of Kiribati how climate change is affecting their communities and other Pacific Island nations in our region. This is one of the many examples of ecological injustices that are happening around the world. While rich, industrialized countries like Australia are contributing most to human-induced climate change, countries and communities that have contributed least are bearing the brunt of it. It is an example of how matters of environmental justice and social justice are intimately linked and intertwined. This is why Pope Francis invited us in his 2015 encyclical letter Laudato Si to listen to both the cry of the earth and the cry of the poor. You have also learned about COP26, United Nations Climate Change Conference in Glasgow, which is still running until Friday. It's so important that all countries around the world, especially the ones with the highest carbon emissions, like Australia, finally take bold steps to reduce those emissions and reach net zero, which is the only way to limit further global warming. During this liturgy, I want to speak about another important dimension of ecological justice, the spiritual and faith dimension. Pope St. John Paul II once pointed out that the environmental crisis is not just an economic or technological problem, but also a moral and spiritual problem. Pope Francis and many theologians have explained this further. For a long time, people in Western societies especially have become used to the idea that we stand outside of nature or even above nature. We have this mistaken notion that nature is there for us to use and exploit so that we can consume more and more and our economy can continue to grow endlessly. We just continue to mine minerals, and log trees as if the environment were our personal warehouse. We continue to produce waste and emit greenhouse gases as if the environment were one large landfill. Even for Christians who regard the environment, the environment as God's creation, this mindset is not atypical. The book of Genesis tells us that humans have a special place in God's creation. This special role has often been misunderstood and people think that humans are masters of a creation which is there to serve us. But that is a gross misinterpretation. Understanding ourselves as masters of a creation has alienated humans from the rest of creation. It has damaged our relationship with creation and also with God, our loving creator. Both relationships need healing and reconciliation. In his encyclical letter, Laudato Si, Pope Francis explains that we are called to undergo a conversion, which is a change of heart. We have to convert from being masters to being partners with God's creation. According to Pope Francis, such a conversion needs to be motivated and inspired by an ecological spirituality grounded in the convictions of our faith. This sense of being connected to creation is something we need to develop, develop and to grow in our hearts. We can learn this from our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander brothers and sisters. They have a deep spiritual connection with the land and country. They see themselves as stewards and partners rather than conquerors and masters of God's creation. Today we are just beginning to appreciate this ancient wisdom more and more. 
whereas our commodity-driven culture seeks to extract things from the land and country, our indigenous brothers and sisters acknowledge and celebrate the radical interdependence and reciprocity within diverse webs of life. It is they who teach us the importance of safeguarding Mother Earth's delicate balance and the healthy conditions for life to flourish. Sadly, that delicate balance is at the point of collapse. We are facing an ecological crisis and the message of Lao Dato Si could not have been more poignant. Pope Francis wants the whole church globally to act with a greater sense of urgency. Lao Dato Si provides us with this new direction which centers on the strengthening of relational wholeness of everything and everyone. As a result, all our efforts must be at the service of fellow human beings and the environment, a technological and economic development which does not leave in its wake a better world and an integrally higher quality of life cannot be considered progress. Francis recognizes that the contradiction between economic growth and the Earth's ecological balance cannot be considered progress because too often people's quality of life actually diminishes by the deterioration of the environment, the low quality of food, or the depletion of resources in the midst of economic growth. He further argues that we can't pursue capitalist or even green growth and simultaneously reverse the breakdown of the ecological resources. We must learn that less is more. We must learn to envision a new economy that shifts away from consumption and exploitation to one that celebrates radical interdependence and reciprocity within diverse webs of life. Only by taking less from the earth, we can move to an alternative model of living in radical harmony and deep connection with the planet. This new consciousness and way of living opens to new possibilities. It moves us from scarcity to abundance, from extraction to regeneration, from dominion to reciprocity, from ruthless exploitation to responsible stewardship, and from loneliness and separation to connection with all that is around us. Part of today's Catholic Earth Care Youth Summit is that we all reflect on what actions you and your school communities have already taken and how you can develop that good work further. Earlier this year, Pope Francis has invited all Catholics around the world to embark on a seven-year journey of caring more for creation and becoming a sustainable church. As Australian bishops, we have pledged to join the, the Pope on this journey and we invite all Catholic parishes, schools and families to join us too. Later today, you'll be invited to make your own pledge. You can start with small steps and simple actions individually with your families and as school communities. For a good reason, the motto of this youth summit is from little things, big things grow. We can trust that when we try to be partners of God's creation, God will be our partner at our side and journey together with us. I wish you all the best for the remainder of today's summit, for the actions you will take to care for creation, and also for your studies in school. May God bless you always.